I, Nova, have been married to Nathan for about a year. We used to live happily in a comfortable rented apartment. Although Nathan's family house is only a 10-minute walk away, his parents seldom visit us. Therefore, I have never had the typical mother-in-law worries and have lived without any family-related stress. Nathan and I met through our work after college. He works at a printing company, and I work at a publishing house. We are both doing well in our careers and have been discussing whether to buy a property. When I mentioned this to my parents, they generously offered us the use of their land. While my parents are not extremely wealthy, they are comfortable and have never faced any significant financial issues. I immediately told Nathan, and we agreed to consider that option. Since then, we have started visiting model homes on weekends and talking to real estate agents about new condominiums being constructed. We discussed our preferences for a home, whether a standalone house or a condo, the type of kitchen we wanted, the number of bedrooms, and other details. These discussions were actually quite enjoyable. One day, Nathan received a call from his mother. She had heard about our plans to build a new home and suggested that we consider a duplex and have them live next door. Nathan casually dismissed the suggestion at the time, as it was not an option we were considering. The following week, we went to his parents' house for dinner, and his sister from the neighboring town was also there. She had recently divorced and was now a single mother of three. During dinner, Nathan's mother brought up the duplex idea again, saying that it was a fantastic idea and that his father agreed. They offered to contribute financially, and if they were to move out in the future, we would receive a share of the property. She mentioned how convenient it would be for me to have them next door if I ever needed help. Although she emphasized that it wouldn't be a problem if they weren't nearby, she seemed very enthusiastic about the idea. I hadn't even discussed the land issue with my folks yet. Seeing our uncertainty, his mother-in-law went on to say that if you lived on that land, your parents would be considerably more at peace. Building there would undoubtedly make them pleased. His mother-in-law proceeded to phone Nathan every day, repeating the same conversation. What are you going to do? Having a duplex isn't necessarily a terrible idea. Having family close could be useful. We weren't completely convinced, but after a month of his mother-in-law's repeated calls, we decided to build a duplex on my parents' property. A bank loan would cover half of the expenses with the other half coming from Nathan's parents. The layout gradually took shape and judgments were made regarding the house's color, inside tiles, flooring, and size. It is getting to the stage when we really need to get our money in order. However, the money that Nathan's parents committed to paying was not transmitted. When Nathan contacted his mother-in-law and asked her to transfer it, she replied that there was a minor delay with the money from this house. Can you pay for it right now? We pledged to pay you back. Nathan's parents are now claiming they are unable to pay. Nathan was growing upset since our plans had already advanced and it was too late to cancel them. They're being unreasonable by asking us to cover for them, he muttered. I felt helpless and decided to discuss the problem with my parents. The next day, I went to my childhood home and explained our situation. My mother replied that we were going to give you the land anyway. If they pledge to pay later, we'll pay for it now. You should not have to give up on your ideal home. Feeling sorry, I accepted their generous offer. Thanks to their assistance, the construction went smoothly and we soon had our ideal home. But Nathan's parents moved in before us and they settled fairly quickly. Every day, his mother-in-law would call her guests over and proudly show them throughout the house, including our section. Our ideal duplex is finally finished. Isn't it lovely? We have a large yard, so we aim to plant a garden and enjoy it. She would say it as if she had built the house herself. It didn't sit well with me. It had been a month since we moved in and Nathan's parents had yet to pay their portion. When Nathan inquired, it constantly replied, soon, very soon. After two and three months, nothing had changed. One day, his mother-in-law approached us and said, your sister, Jennifer, has mentioned wanting to live here. You know she is raising her three children on her own. Therefore, it is difficult for her. This meant that four more people lived immediately next door. We weren't thrilled, but given the circumstances and the fact that we were family, we couldn't say no. 
However, his mother-in-law mentioned something astonishing. Why don't you all move out? With three growing children, this house will not be large enough for everyone. It makes sense, right? Nathan raised his voice slightly. That is not what we agreed upon. Why should we have to leave our own homes? Simply think about it. You are both working properly. You hardly ever come home. You also don't have children, so you can manage. Ruby's parents are rich. They'll assist you if something comes up, particularly financially. My mother-in-law's reaction astounded me. Audacious words. Nathan felt the same way. For heaven's sake, you haven't paid any of the cost you promised. What's happening? I was thinking the exact same thing. When on earth will they ever repay us? I began to wonder if they had never intended to pay us from the start. We told you it was delayed. This is the bank's fault. They're slow in their procedures. If you have a complaint, please contact our bank. My mother-in-law was getting increasingly defensive. It didn't seem like this would be settled anytime soon. Nathan and I talked about it in our bedroom that night. If things continue like this, my mother and her group will undoubtedly attempt to kick us out and take over the house. I know her too well. She is my biological mother, after all. Nathan was correct. My mother-in-law's attacks began the next day, and she never stopped trying to bring her other daughter to our house. The passive, aggressive comments and harassment directed at me grew worse. Is this what they refer to as classic mother-in-law issues? I never imagined I'd go through this. When Nathan and I lived in that small apartment, we rarely saw her. I did not expect things to turn out this way. Perhaps I was naive. About a month later, Nathan and I reached a decision. I told my folks everything, and they were outraged. Then with Nathan, the four of us started devising a plan. We chose to move out. Nathan informed his mother-in-law, we are leaving. I understand you want to bring your daughter over. We'll start packing. Her mother-in-law's face lit up with excitement as soon as she heard that. His sister Ruby also commented, it's always great to have a brother like you. I'm also open to moving at any point. Her positive answer was noteworthy. We decided to move into a virtually new apartment we had been eyeing for a while and return to renting. It reminded us of when we were newlyweds and lived in a similar location. The nostalgia was intense. A week later, the telephone rang. Nathan asked, is that so? That is good news. By when exactly? It turned out that Nathan and I had put our duplex on the market. We found a buyer who asked us to leave within two weeks. While the mother-in-laws were away, we allowed agents and potential purchasers into the house. One of the families agreed to take it. We then arranged for two huge trucks and had specialists box all of the items and furniture. We planned it for when the mother-in-laws announced they were attending a local event over the weekend. It appears to be a children's event, as Eva, the oldest sister-in-law, is accompanying her children. They left in the morning and were not anticipated to return for a long time, so we spotted a chance and arranged accordingly. Thanks to the professionals, the packing went much smoother and faster than we expected. We waited outside the house, and by dusk, the mother-in-law had returned. The mother-in-law entered the house with an uneasy expression and screamed, sensing something was wrong. What on earth is this? What happened? Where is our stuff? Eva, the sister-in-law, was also frightened. My spouse and I remained cool as we watched their reactions from outside. My husband informed us that everything we needed was loaded onto the truck, with the destination address clearly marked for us. Although it was a bit smaller, it would suffice for the five of us. He also mentioned that the house had already been sold and now belonged to someone else. With those words, he bid us farewell. The news came as a shock to everyone. You sold it. This was our house. How could you? They exclaimed. My husband calmly explained that while Nova's parents owned the property, we owned the house and had the right to sell it. He pointed out that they hadn't paid anything, not even rent, and we were struggling to make ends meet, especially with the bank loan we had taken out. The once noisy mothers-in-law fell silent. Despite warnings from my parents, we had taken out a loan because we felt we couldn't rely on them anymore. Unfortunately, the construction costs promised by the mothers-in-law were never paid. 
Before we left, my husband made it clear that while we had covered everything up to that point, they would need to manage the unloading themselves. He believed they could handle it, especially since they hadn't contributed financially. My husband had planned this and was prepared to cut ties with them. We informed my parents of everything and obtained their permission to sell both the land and the home. We used the majority of the sale money to repay my parents, with the rest going towards settling the bank loan. We prepared to start afresh in an apartment. While I'm unsure if they went to the address we provided, we haven't had any contact with my husband's relatives since. There was a request for assistance directed at my parents, but they declined, stating that they couldn't help anymore. My husband apologized to my parents for the trouble caused by his family, but they reassured him that these things happen. They also promised to call the police if they ever showed up. So we changed our contact information and jobs. We look forward to our new beginning, living life just the two of us.